uh, that God has has put me in today. But I thank God for the privilege that He has chosen me. I'm not saying you have not been chosen, but I thank God that He has chosen me for this day. Amen. Because when I look back, I'm, my birthday is going to be in less than two weeks. I'll be forty. Hitting, leave, exiting the 30s, going into the 40s. Amen. Uh, another step up, another level up. Come on now. Amen. And you know what? As I as I think about the goodness of Jesus and what He's done for me now. Yes. My dad, he often tells me of the story, which I don't like to say it's a story, but it's a reality story that yes. today I ain't even supposed to be here. I know some of y'all ain't supposed to be here. But on my testimony, I shouldn't even have been existing after three months old. Because he often tells the story that, that I had died and I came back to life. He said, I died and I came back to life. And he tells it like this. He says, my mother, my grandmother, my aunts was all surrounding me. And uh, they was just surrounding me and they was praying because I had a blockage in my intestine. Hallelujah. It was preventing me to have a bowel movement. And so everything that I would eat would constantly come up. Yeah. I wouldn't get no nutrients or vitamins to my body. So it caused me to go into dehydration, which caused me to lose weight, which my, my older brother was like seven pounds and I was like three pounds and so my dad said I went limp in my in my grandmother's arms and they noticed life went out of me they noticed my lips turned purple my, my skin turned pale <laughs> representing death and uh my dad had been praying and fasting. He'd been a man of faith for many years before we was born. Yes, yes. And, I, and I can hear him say, I refuse to let my son die before I lay my hands on him and decree and declare in the name of Jesus yes. life to enter back into him. Yes. I can hear him saying, God, I laid hands on many sick folk mm -hmm. you used me to dry up tumors and cancers yes. you used me to open up blind eyes and people that had uh, short legs you've seen them grow yes. and I touched them and called it forth but here's my son God yes. who got an identical twin I refuse to go out with saying a word of prayer he said, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Yes. And the prayer of faith shall raise them up. And my dad said, as he began to begin to pray for me, lay me on the bed and begin to call life back into me. He had his eyes closed. But he said, my mom and her siblings was like, they called him Junior. Look, Junior, Junior. He's breathing again. He's breathing again. He's breathing again. Ah, yes. And he said, he always said that my, my legs was as big as I am right now. He said my legs was about the size of a chicken at the time. He describes it as being that small. He said that when life came back into me, they called for the ambulance. And they rushed me to a hospital in Lordville. He said, while I'm 100% dehydrated, death came out and life came back in. The nurse stuck her hand out and I gripped it. And she said, this boy ain't even supposed to be alive. How, what kind of strength does he got at this moment? He ain't even supposed to be uh, having this kind of strength at this moment to be able to grip my hand. He's supposed to be dead, 100% dehydrated. He ain't even supposed to have strength in his body. I'm just trying to share a little brief testimony because I know some of you may not know some of that side. 
before I get into God's word, I can also, as time go on, I knew God was dealing with my heart and calling me to ministry. I, you know, my, my dad's a pastor and he raised me up. And as a child of a pastor, you wear this, uh, let me see what can I call it. You wear this, just say LeBron James and his son is coming up. He's got to be in his shadow. And I know you can, I know you can, yes. as, as, the son or daughter of a man or woman of God. Yes. People making fun of you. Yes, yes. And you trying to find out who you are. Yes. So in your finding out who you are, you become like what you ain't. Amen. Amen. You become like those in the streets and you adapt to their uh, environment. You adapt, adapt to their style and what they were trying to fit in. So. I know y'all have always seen me in a suit, always seen me relaxed, but I used to smoke weed, I used to get high, I used to drink and drive, and about literally killed myself doing it. And I can recall, my heart was a woman. My heart was, God, before I choose you, I'm gonna get a woman first. I'm going to get the woman saved so I can get saved and I ain't got that pressure though. <laughs> that didn't work out that way. <laughs> but I, I, I recall my sister said she was praying one time in her room and she, she told me, she said, I heard the Lord say, you'll never have a successful relationship until you surrender your life unto me. And in hearing that, I rebelled the more. I went after some more female and lay with some more because I heard that word yes. and I was really upset because I'm like God I got I gotta do I gotta give my life to you first I gotta give up all this for you <laughs> and then I was still running I was still running until one day I got off third shift and I was drinking all day, drinking all day, fist, drinking all day. Then I mix it with marijuana. Try to entertain this girl that I used to go with, my brother, my cousin, another female, and try to entertain them to the point where here it is about 10, 11 o'clock, and I'm under the wheel. Driving. I only thing I can remember is where I was in my mom them yard and where we ended up at. But I can recall a couple of times where we was on this little bitty road. It felt like I was hitting at least 65, 70. And drunk going that fast is, is really dangerous. And I can recall hitting and going around the curves. And I passed out a little bit. And all of a sudden, I woke up. And I kicked the gear and just took off. And then there were some leaves on the side that I was swerving and I hit. And the girl I used to go with, she said, boy, what's wrong with you? And in that instant, I passed out in like three seconds. I heard the enemy say, now I'm going to kill you. The devil said, now I'm going to kill you. And, I, and when I came to myself, we ran through a fence. And I seen sparks. I seen all these things. And I thought to myself, this car is about to blow up. I'm too ashamed to get out of this car. So I was going to stay and let it blow up and catch fire with it. But I'm like, man, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. But I'm saying all this to say that God's grace and his mercy extended my life. Amen. Just like he's extending your life. God's grace and mercy extended your life. He said he should, his grace and mercy should follow you all the days of his life. And I'm so glad for the moment to be here on this day. Uh, so right now, we're going to go on and get into the Word. What God has given me, what God has given me, I got to get a little drink of water on my mouth. But what God has given me was uh, His Word. But before we go into it, I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. And so, Father, we thank you on the day for your blessings for your power, for your anointing, for your strength, for what you're about to do. 
for your love, for your mercy, Lord, for all that you're doing, God. We thank you, Lord God, just for all that you're doing in our life. And we just pray, Lord, even at this moment, Lord God, hide me behind your glory, hide me behind your presence. Let the Holy Ghost, Lord God, take over at this moment. Let the words of your power, Lord God, come through me, Lord God, through my lips. Lord, open the ears of your people, that which you've given me, Lord God, that it may uh, transform lives and produce, Lord God, a fruitful harvest in this place, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. All right, in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. We're going to be coming from the book of Genesis 1, 26 through 28. The book of Genesis 1, 26 through 28. The book of Genesis 1, 28. 26 through 28. <clears throat> if you have it, you can stand to your feet if you can. We'll read. And God said, Let us make man in our image. We can all read together too. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hallelujah. You can have a seat. Uh, God has given me a message today entitled, Unite, Conceive, and Bring Forth. Look to your neighbor and say, Unite. Unite. Come on now. Unite, Unite. Conceive, conceive, and Bring Forth. And bring forth. Hallelujah. The power of unity. See, God created us in his likeness and in his image. And God commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. It takes a male and a female to produce a child. Though the man carries the seed, he cannot produce without the female. Though a female carries the eggs, it takes the male for her to produce a child with another that they can't produce, that they are able to produce. So we must, as, as he read, God had commanded Adam and Eve as he created them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. He called them to be fruitful. He didn't just form them from the dust of the ground without a purpose. He formed them with the intention to build relationship and fellowship with them. All right. He formed them from the dust of the ground, which is nothing. And he began to breathe his life into them. And it says, man became a living soul. So God formed man in, in such a way that he created them fearfully and wonderfully made. And every animal uh, in the earth he valued us more than any other creation. Amen. He made us in his likeness. He made us in his image. Yes. And he said, I command you, in other words, to be fruitful and to multiply. Right. Replenish the earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say the power of unity. The power. the power of unity. Unity has so much power and ability that if just two of the opposite sex would come together, they can unite and become one, that they can conceive and give birth. According to Matthew 19, 18 and 19, it says, And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God created us with such ability and such power that if two of us 
to just come together. He said, touching anything on the earth and shall ask, it shall be done of them, done for them of my father. He created us in such a powerful way that I'm talking in the natural, but in the spirit, he said, if you can just connect with somebody, if you can get with somebody and unite with somebody, if you can get, if you can be married and get with an Elizabeth, you can see something happening. So we must get into a place where we're in oneness and one accord with God and with the one that he chose us to be with. And I'm not just talking about marriage. Hallelujah. I'm talking about unity. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to go to Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Ecclesiastes 4. 9 through 12. Hallelujah. And it says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they, should, if, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. For he is not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord, cord is not easily or quickly broken. Hallelujah. It's better for us to have, I mean, it's good to have one, but it's better to have two, because two can be effective. Hallelujah. I want to take you to the book of Deuteronomy 32 and 30. Deuteronomy 32 and 30. <coughs> Hallelujah. And it says, How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? Except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. And I want to go to Joshua 23 and 10. Joshua 23 and 10. He said, One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God he is that fighteth for you as he hath promised. Because the Lord our God fights for us, he has promised that one of us can chase a thousand and two cup can put ten thousand to flight. He has promised that if we can come together as one, in the body of Christ, we can be effective in the earth. We can be effective in prophetic word worship center. If we come together and get to the place where we do not allow the enemy to come in any and every kind of way to distract us, to disrupt us, to interrupt any, con uh, to, in in to com um, apologize. But if we can get to the place where we can come in tight yeah. and not allow the enemy to seep in any and every kind of way. Yeah. Because the enemy is seeking to devour God's people. Yeah. He's seeking to destroy us. But if we come together more, if we squeeze in a little tight, it makes it a little harder for him to be able to pick out one. Yes. So when one is isolated and staying to himself or herself, they become easy target yes. for the enemy to, to destroy them, to do whatever he wants to with them. Mm -hmm. They easy target, and the enemy says, now they're going to become my prey. I'm coming after you. Yes. And especially those of us who have been, uh, who have been raised up and we know the word of God. Yes. Come on, he said, I'm coming after you even harder. Yes. Because I see you as a valuable piece to the kingdom of God. Yes. Come on. And if I can knock you down and destroy you, then that's one less thing I have to worry about. Yes. And so the enemy wants to come in 
to our homes and break up our marriages, break up our relationships, break up our relationships with our kids, break up our relationships with our brothers and sisters to the point where, where that we are no longer effective, no more love in the house. We bitter, we upset with one another over the littlest and the smallest things. And so the enemy wants to do it in the church. The enemy wants to knock us out of our position. Yeah. The enemy wants to get us to the place where we're afraid to do what God has called us to do. So when you begin to step forward and go forth in God, then the enemy says, now I got to come back with a little more aggression. Mm -hmm. I got to come back with something more stronger, something more potent, something... <clears throat> Something more powerful with the ability to take them out. Because you get to the point where what used to work don't work no more. Yes. And so now you ain't you get into the place of God where God has shown you the enemy's coming in this way. I want you to go this way. Yes. So the enemy got to come up with another tactic, another tr strategy, another scheme to throw you off. Uh -huh. But we have to get to the place where we are. Where we in God and his word and where we're allowing him to lead us and guide us and become our GPS system. Yeah. That even when we get distracted and get off track, that he reroutes us right back to the place that we're supposed to be. All right. yeah. Hallelujah. The enemy, is the word said he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yeah. The devil wants to steal from you everything you got. So every time you put your hands on something, every time you put your hands to something, it seems like something always happens. Seems like something always come up. Seems like something's always distracting you and throwing you off. But you must understand that these are road signs and signals that you're heading on the right direction. You cannot expect to be trying to do good and walk for God and not expect warfare. You cannot be expecting to try to live right and everything else wrong come up against you. Yes. Hallelujah. The enemy is going to try to throw his best shot at you to take you out, to kill you, to throw you off your path, and to leave you for dead. Yes. And I know that some of you have been left for dead. Mm -hmm. Some of you, the enemy has said, forgetting, the, the enemy has forgotten about you. Yes. The enemy has caused those that you thought you could depend on, those that you truly love those that you gave to those that you not just gave money to but you gave your heart to you gave your time to those that begin to turn their back on you and it wounded you and it hurted you to the point where some of you said I don't want to even come back to the church no more some of you said I don't even want to go back to the house I don't want to go to the reunion because I've been hurt I've been battered I've been destroyed I've been I've been wounded to the place where I feel like I'm broken like Humpty Dumpty who sat on a wall and had a great fall. Yeah. And all the king horsemen could not put him back together again. Right. And the enemy says, I'm going to take my best shot and I'm going to shatter your life. I'm going to have your life all over the place. I'm going to have your life to the point where you're all messed up in your mind. I'm going to have your life to the point where you can't think right. I'm going to have your life to the point where in your mind you feel like there's no hope, so suicide looks like it's the only way to go. Yeah. The enemy's trying to come into the place of your life to where he's trying to destroy your thoughts. He's just trying to destroy your vision. He's trying to destroy everything that you got your hands to. But you have to get to the place where even if you don't got nobody, you got to find somebody and hook up with them, unite, yeah. and expect to conceive and to bring forth something. Because when God began to give you a vision, he began to give you a plan, a blueprint, a layout, hallelujah, you can't expect it to just happen overnight. You can't expect things to just happen overnight. When you plant plants or seeds in the ground, you don't expect it to grow that very instant. But we live in a time where we want that microwave, Burger King, have it your way style of a blessing. That style of, of, of work and all that, that you know, Lord, uh, we don't want to work for it. Uh -huh. We want somebody else to do it for us. We want somebody else to lay the foundation. But God said, I put it in you to do, you won't work for it. Yes. Hallelujah. I've called you forth mm. to bring forth this vision. And why are you afraid to walk out in faith? Yes. Why are you afraid 
to step out when I've given you my word, my promise. He said, my promise shall not return unto me void. He said, my word is yes and yes and amen. He said, if I said it, I will do it. Hallelujah. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Yeah. If you lose it in the earth, it's loose in the heavens. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, two or three shall touch and agree anything on earth, it shall be done. Yeah. Hallelujah. So if you get to the place where you say, no, Lord, devil, you got to get out of my way. Yeah. Devil, you have no authority in my life. You're attacking my mind, you're attacking my body, but I stand in the name of Jesus and I declare and I decree that I am God. Hallelujah. I'm going to get what's mine. I'm taking back what's rightfully mine. Yes. And many of us, the enemy has stolen things from us. He has taken things from us and we've literally given up and let him have it. Yes. We've laid down our life and let him trample all over us. Right. And God said, I didn't create you to be trampled on. I did not create you to be walked on as a carpet. I created you to be fearfully, wonderfully made. And when I breathe my life in you, I breathe value in your life. He said, I breathe potential in your life. I breathe purpose in your life with a destiny. Hallelujah. He said, I know the plans that I have for you to give you an expected end. Yeah. My plans is not to be of evil, but of good, to give you an expected end. Yeah. And God is, is, is expecting us to get to that place yeah. of expected end. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the enemy is going to try to do whatever it takes to stop us from getting to that expected end. Yeah. The enemy is trying to take us out in many different ways. Hallelujah. But we as the body of Christ have to come together. We have to come together so strong, stronger than ever before. Amen. Because the world is watching us. Yes. They looking and they watching. Yes. They saying, if it can't be done for them, what make them think it's going to be done for me? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to go to Matthew 18 and 20. Matthew 18 and 20. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you that God is fighting for you. God is not giving up on you. He's not left you nor has he forsaken you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't count your kids out. Don't count your siblings out. Don't count your parents out, it look like. But you've been calling forth things on their life. And it look like it's going the totally opposite way. That's the plan of the enemy. It's to get you to back up and get you to quit. Get you to throw in the towel and stop. Matthew 18, verse 20 says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. God wants us to know that he's sitting right in the midst of us. Whether it's two or three or whether it's a hundred to a thousand, he says, I'm in the midst of unity. I'm in the midst of a place, people are working on one accord. I want you to know that God loves you more than you love yourself. And sometimes you've thought it's been over and you've thought to quit. And you may have not even said it to no one. It's crossed your mind. What's the use? I might as well throw in the towel. Seem like every time I try to do good, as Paul said, evil is always present. Something's always coming up. Something's always throwing me off to the point where, what's the use? And God says, the enemy has knocked the fight out of you. 
But he says, I'm putting a fight back into you. He says, I'm putting a fight back into you. I'm breathing another wind upon you. I'm breathing my breath upon you that's going to cause you to stand up again. It's going to cause you to stand up again. So don't quit. Don't get up. For what I'm about to do in your life is a new thing. But you have to perceive what I'm doing. You have to get to the place where you see what I'm doing. Hear what I'm saying. Because there's so many voices out there that the enemy will try to use to deceive you, to throw you off, to distract you, to cause you to quit and give up, or cause you to pervert his word, his plan for your life. Even his destiny that he has up on you. And the enemy wants to knock us off our post. He wants us to get to the place where we're so focused on what this one is doing, what that one's doing, what that one's doing, and that one's doing, that we ain't doing what we're supposed to do. So we like players on the football field. My thing was I was a defensive end and I always liked the position of a linebacker because it seemed like the linebacker always got to hit the perfect hit. Amen. The defensive end seemed like he had a lot more responsibility. He had to keep everything in. Mm -hmm. So those <clears throat> playing the linebacker seemed like they're getting all the glory. And some of us get like that. So then what happens is you get out of your place mm. All right your now. position yes. and you go running into somebody else's position mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the enemy comes into the place where you're supposed to be at. Right. Oh, Jesus. And he intercepts right the now. ball. He intercepts your purpose. He intercepts your plan. He intercepts what God has put in your life and he picks it up and takes it away from you. And like we had to do because we fumbled the ball, because we was out of our position, the coach began to yell and holler at us. And sometimes it made us even more frustrating. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't want, some of us didn't want to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. Some of us didn't want to be coached. Yeah. But we wanted the glory. Right. We wanted to be the one to run the ball, but we didn't want to do what it takes to show up and practice. Amen. Work as a team. <laughs> so I want you to know that regardless of where you are in this church, regardless of where you are in your home, yes. and on your job, in whatever position you are in, do it with excellence. Amen. God says, I see those that have hurt you. I see those that have walked all over you, those that who have belittled you and made you feel like you're nothing. But he says, I'm bringing you up. I'm taking you to another place and another level. And some of y'all have taken you already up and upgraded you and you don't even realize it. You done got afraid and now you done went back to level one. When God says, now I put you on level 10, you ain't ready. You wanted it, now I'm giving it to you, now you're running. But God says, stay on your post. He said, for I'm giving you strength to stand. Stay on your post and observe the enemy and watch what he's doing. Do what you're supposed to do. Yes. If you're supposed to sound the alarm, sound the alarm and let the people know that the enemy is in the camp. Yes. Don't just be on your post asleep. Mm. 
right. on your watch yes. oh. because I'm holding you responsible right. because if, they, if the enemy comes in and kills one of them, the blood is on your hand. Yes. God says, I want my people to become one once again. Yes. Amen. Once they get to the place of oneness, I'm going to do like I did in the book of Acts 2 and 1. Hallelujah. I'm going to usher in a sound. A sound that's going to signify my glory is coming in. A sound that's going to signify, that's going to, that's going to enter and cause the winds to blow yes. upon your life. And you're going to hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind come in. Mm -hmm. God says, I have not failed you. And some of you are upset because people have failed you. And you've gotten mad at me, God says. But I did not hurt you, the Lord said. He said, they hurt you. Mm -hmm. He said, but behold, I do a new thing in your life. Do you not perceive it? Can, can you play something? So, he said, I do a new thing in your life. You've been wounded. You've been hurt. Where were you mad and upset? The book of Romans 12. The book of Romans 12. We get to The book of Romans 12 and 3 says. I say through the grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt with every man the measure of faith. For we as many members in for we are for we for as we have many members in one body, and all members are not the same or the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. Bible that tells me in the book of Psalms 133 that it's good and pleasant for men to dwell in unity. For it's like the oil runs off the head in the beard of Aaron to his daughters. God commanded the blessing. And so what the enemy, this is what the enemy is doing. He said, I can't attack the head. And so being that I can't attack the head, I'm attacking the body. He says, I'm going to destroy the body so I can get to the head. So I can frustrate the head. God says, even in this house, that the body is causing frustration to the head. Where what it does is it saps strength out of the head. The thinking. So to the point where we become out of place and out of unity. The Bible said that we are many members that make up one body. We are many members that make up one body. The enemy is trying to destroy us. Amen. And not just prophetic word worship center, but the body of Christ as a whole. Can you think about how much of an effect we can have and an impact we can have on the lives 
of our community, communities, the world, our jobs, if we can all come together as one in the body of Christ. So the enemy is trying to do whatever he can to sap strength out of us. Cause us to be divided. Some of us here and some of us there. It's, an, uh, it's so easy. It's an easy access for me to get in. But at this time, I just want you to stand. you have put together. You said, let no man separate. I know you was talking about husband and wife, God. Lord God, I speak this over this body of believers, Lord God. And as you put us together, let no one separate us. For we know that the enemy comes in like a flood. You said you raise up a standard, God. But guard our minds, Lord Guard our children, Lord God. Guard them from people, Lord God, they ain't even supposed to be around, Lord God. That the enemy would use to try to take advantage of them, Lord. But we pray, Lord, your blessings over this house, over this people, Lord God. Move in such a mighty way, Lord God, and have your way, Lord Jesus. Lord, touch every heart that's in this place, Lord. Lord, touch every mind, Lord. Touch every soul, Lord. Touch every soul, Jesus. Touch our homes and our jobs, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to be led by your Spirit, God. We thank you, Father. We honor you, Lord. Yeah. Uh -huh.